I would say this, that your Heavenly Father has no respecter of persons, and you are loved just like the next one next to you, amen? You actually can grow in grace, Peter said. You can grow in the grace of God, and that's e that grace is actually the kindness of God. You can grow in that, where your Heavenly Father just lavishes more and more and more out on you. He loves them all, but he can lavish upon you, and that's why I say that uh, God says... Uh, <coughs> Consider your ways. And the child that considers their ways and serves God and say, what can I do for you today, God? What can I do for you today, God? That's a child that will capture the heart of Almighty God. It will. But I want you to see that God was the one that captured your heart in the beginning. <laughs> and as we read in chapter 3 of John, John uh, 16, for God... We know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Let me read it like this. Your father so loved you that he gave the only thing that he had. His most prized possession, it was his son. And whosoever would believe in him will never perish but have her everlasting life. Your father loved you and loves you so much that he gave his most precious thing to you. Jesus. Your father. Yeah, this is Father's Day, amen. amen. He saved your soul. He knew what you needed long ago, and he came in and said, yes, you are corrupt. But I'm going to wash away all your sins. He even says, I'll give you my spirit. And I will put it in you. And I will change you. And you will be a new person. Your heavenly father did that for you. Amen. Amen. He did that for you. Because he loves you. Really, for a Christian, every day is a father's day. Every day is your Father's Day. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. That's the Father. That's in Hebrews 13, 5. The Father said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I wrote something here, and as I wrote it, I just, I just, I just wept over it because it's so true. A Father gives it all. He gives it all. I've seen so many fathers go without, but their children have what they need. The only thing that he has, he gives. Jesus, our Father, gave Jesus. He gave himself to you. Jesus came out of the Father, and the Father gave you himself. He gave himself to love you with everything in his being. All that he had. A father gives it all. Your heavenly father gave you everything. Everything that he had. You know what he wants from you? He just wants you to love him. It's the only thing just wants you to love him. And he knows if you love him, you go to great lengths to be next to him, to serve him, to love him back. Jesus said, if you hear me, you hear my father. Our Father came down in the flesh and he talked to us. Hosanna in the highest. Emmanuel, O God, with us. Jesus said, anyone who sees me, he sees the Father. Amen. Jesus always built up the Father because he was everything to Jesus. Amen. And he's everything to you and I. <coughs> A father only wants to be loved. 
Listen to this. A father only wants to be loved by the, by the children that he has raised or that he has. That's really the only thing he wants. Different times, my children will ask me, what do you want? I don't want anything. I really don't need anything. I work hard, and if I wanted something, I would get it. I just really want your heart. Really want your heart. Just want you. That's what any father would say to their children. What father would say to their children, well, you could give me a little money. Could give me this, could give me that. They usually, fathers really don't do that. They have to search within themselves and say, but I want to give you something. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, why don't you just come over? That's all I want. And that's all your heavenly father wants. He just wants you. That's all he wants. He cleared us. He pardoned us. All are wrong. We stand before him dressed in white. Can you imagine the day you get to heaven and say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, by the way, where's my father? Oh, he says, let me go show you. So you walk up to a throne. He says, he's just waiting for you. He wants you to come on up and just sit at his feet and talk with you. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Father, he says, I loved you from the beginning. I put your name in the book of life. I called for angels and I commanded them to go surround you and protect you. I gave you my son and he came you, to you at the right time in your life and opened up your eyes to come to me. And you look at your father and you see that with your father nothing is impossible. And you think about your father in heaven or a son thinks about his father here and what does he think? He's the biggest, he's the best, he's the strongest. My dad is smarter than your dad. But we know that with our heavenly father because he knows everything. He even knows things that Jesus doesn't know. The day that Jesus is going to be sent back. We talked about that on Wednesday night. Jesus didn't even know that. He said, only my Father in heaven knows. Isn't it nice that you got a dad in heaven that knows everything? He is the biggest. He is the best. He is the smartest. He owns all the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns it all. He all power and might rolls from his kingdom. Amen. <laughs> There's nothing like him. There's nothing ever going to be like him. And he called you sons and daughters, and he says, come on with me. Amen. But there's a bad one out there that says, well, he don't really love you. He's a liar. No, he's, the truth has never been in him. That's the old devil. He always knows what to do. God said, just ask me. Seek me when you're in trouble. I always know what to do. Daddy, always know it. Dad will know. Let's go ask him. Ellen used to say, Dad will know. Let's go ask him. He always sees it coming. He'll give you a word of wisdom and says, Hey, you got something coming your way. Hunker down. Be all right, I'm with you. Got something coming. Got some news that's going to set you back on your heels, but he says, I'm your strength. I'll put you right back on your feet. He sees all. And he says, don't you take vengeance. Vengeance is mine. You just be loving. He says, I know all about you. And it would be better that no one touch you. For a millstone should be hung about their neck and thrown in the depths of the sea if they touch you. 
And that's not even close to what I will do. My dad in heaven watches over each one of you. Amen? Amen. Which is your dad. He says here in Romans 8, 15, you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have been given the Holy Spirit whereby you are adopted and in through your heart you cry, what? Abba, Father. Father, the God in heaven is real to you and he's more than God to you He's your closest friend. You came out of him, his loins. Because of the love of your father, he shed abroad in your hearts. The love of God, which is the Holy Spirit, which is given to us. Romans 5, 5, Galatians 4, 6, because you are sons, God has sent you forth. The spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, twice that's found. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant. You're no more a servant, although you serve him. See, servants don't know what their masters do. But Jesus says, you are my friend, and I'm going to tell you everything that I'm going to do. But you are no more servants, but you're a son. You know what it is to be a son of the Most High God? This is what the scriptures tell us. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. An heir of God. You have the ability to call out to heaven and say, I have a need down here. I have a need, God. And God says, I'll hear you. This one serves me. I will serve them back. Amen. Amen. What would God do for a child? What would you do for a child that serves you all the time? You would make, make way possible. I have seen parents that really didn't have the money to spend. They didn't have it. And that child wanted something, and they go to great lengths. I don't know if they steal it or how they get it. <laughs> but they get it for that child. God doesn't have to steal. He has it. He'll do it for you. Just love him. Don't be far away from him. Be close to him. Your father speaks over you. He speaks through you. In Matthew 10, 19, he said this. That's how close he is. He says, when they deliver you up, take no thought or what you shall speak. For it shall be given you in that same hour what you should speak. For it is not ye that speaks, but it is the spirit of your father that will speak through you. He's so close to you. He wants to be so close. Let him. Receive him. Love him. Amen. Walk with him. Amen. Honor him. Amen. Amen. Your father will raise you up from the dead. He raised you, your spirit from the dead, and you're born again. But he also said, I'll raise you from the dead. Your father is not going to allow your body to remain in the grave. That's how much he loves you. I'm going to raise every part of you up from the dead. It was his idea. In John 6, 39, he said, And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that all which he has given me, Jesus says, I will lose nothing, but should raise it up again on the last day. That's Jesus. This is the will of him that sent me. That's the Father. That everyone that sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life. And he said, and I'll raise him up on the last day. Your body will not stay in the grave because your Father loves you that much. He's going to put it together. 
It's going to be like Christ. You're going to come out of the grave. Amen. And if you go, if you go, when you go home to the Lord, you're going to come back with a great cloud of witnesses, it says. And those that are alive and remain here when Christ comes up will be caught up together with them. But those that are raised from the dead will rise from the dead first. The Heavenly Father says, Jesus, go get them. Go get their bodies. Let them be just like you. You're the first begotten. Jesus says, we're going to earth. We are. Yeah, we're going to earth. He says, the Father has said, now's the time. Amen. He said, I didn't even know when to saddle up. But he said, they're all saddled up. Let's go. Amen. He says, he comes back on a white horse and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and they shout. And the dead in Christ rises. That's you. Unless you're here when Jesus comes back. Amen. The way you're all looking, I think you'll be coming back on a horse. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> ah, verse 44, 644. <laughs> no man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. It was your Father in heaven that drew you to Christ. It's your Father in heaven that drew you. This is, not, this is Father's Day. Amen. Every day is Father's Day. I want you to have a new view on your heavenly Father. And Jesus says, and I'll raise him up on the last day because he has drawn you to me. I will give you life and I will give you life everlasting. Don't you mourn like others that have no hope. He said, encourage one another every day that you will see your loved ones one day. They will come. You will catch them. You will see them in the clouds. You'll be caught up together and you be a union between you. You're not of a, a religion that the dead stay in the ground. You're of a religion that the dead come out. Amen. Amen. And this religion is true. In verse 64, but there are some of you that believe not, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that would believe not and who should betray him. Even in any crowd, in every crowd, any congregation, there are the Judases. But in every congregation, there are the Peters. In every congregation, there are the Marys that serve God. There are, in every congregation, there's the Annas, the prophetesses. In every congregation, you can look through the whole Bible, and there's figures in there that are in every congregation. Amen? Amen. There's a whole lot more good than there is bad. So don't go boo-hooing too much. Amen? Judas was only one, amen. There was a whole lot of others. Amen. Therefore I say unto you that no man can come to me except it was given to him of my Father which is in heaven. For your Father is the greatest. John 14, 28, it says, For you have heard that I had said unto you, I go away. And come back again unto you. If you love me, you would rejoice. Because I said I go to the Father. Jesus says, I want you to know something. You'd be rejoicing because you know some. My Father is greater than I am. Amen. My Father is greater than I am. Jesus was pretty great. That you're a son of your father, you're a daughter of your father in heaven. You're a child from the father. He's your father. Psalms 103.13, as the father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those that fear him.
That fear isn't a torment in fear. That fear is a, a respectfulness. I feared my dad. My earthly dad. <coughs> I, sit, I stand here today and I thought on this. I wish I would have loved him more. I wished I would have respected him more. I wished I when it had so much rebellion in me. Are you not going to say the same thing when you get to heaven? Father, I wish I would have loved you more. Oh, golly, I, what was I thinking? Why did I give in? Why was I weak? I could have been so strong. You gave me your spirit, and there was all strength in that. Why didn't I love you more? I could have loved you more. I cherish the day that I get to heaven and I'll see my earthly father. Dad. Quite a day. You know who did all that for me? And is doing that for you? Your heavenly father. He's watching over you. He says, I know. I wasn't going to let that happen. I wasn't, I wasn't going to let you look over the railings of heaven and see your dad burn. <coughs> Right at the end, I saved him. He got cancer and he didn't feel good. And he reached out, but you knew me. And through you, through the son, he got eternal life. He's going to thank you when you get there. You have saved each one of you. have talked to a lot of people. And they're going to be waiting at those pearly gates for each one of you. And saying, thank you. But you've got to go to your dad. He's waiting for you right now say oh we're talking about your heavenly father he's waiting for you right now along the way you might even run into your earthly dad and dad, dad says where are you going hey dad he says you got to go to your father he's made it possible that you and I are here forever together go to him he's been looking for you for a long time hallelujah Whosoever fears the Lord has a secure fortress where their children will be a refuge. Psalms 68.5. This is your father. He is a father to the fatherless. He is a defender to the widow. Amen. That's what we have. We got a God that so loves us, so cherishes us, a father. I, want, I, I just want to use the word father instead of saying God all the time. And I want you to think about that as you, as you uh, go to your heavenly father. I want you to make it very personal and very uh, respectful to him. There's nothing he won't do for you. But he knows exactly where he wants you, what your talents are. Well, that's a father that knows, isn't it? He won't put you behind the desk if you need to be a welder, amen? amen. And he won't let you try to work on a car if you got a different place than that in this life. You're supposed to be up here singing. So I gave you a voice to sing. What are you working on that car for? Yeah. I'll make a way where there is no way. I gave you a voice. I gave you a talent. I want you to use it. And he knows everything. He knows that. Father, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? Father's Day. And I take my hat off today to all the good fathers and even fathers that don't understand and maybe even the ones that made mistakes. That's why God, our Father, he's the perfect one. He gave us Jesus and the blood. And the blood covers it up. What will I do? My children don't talk to me or they all have a problem with me. Go to your heavenly father. He'll know what you should do. Amen. He knows how to pull families together. He knows how to pull, pull a son back to their parents, back to the father. Amen. The daughters, he knows how to pull a family back together. Go to your father in heaven for he knows everything because he, he is said to be almighty. I'll leave, the, I'll leave this with you. I was thinking on 
how one that's over a country, over a nation, is like a father. He watches over a nation. We absolutely have someone watching over our nation right now that's against MS-13, a wicked people. He's also making it very hard for women to kill their babies. He's trying to take funding away from that, that the little children, you tell me that ain't a good dad, that those mothers, those wicked mothers that want to kill their little babies, that he's making it tougher all the time. And I'll tell you what, if we as a people of the United States will pray, we'll get the right people and the right judges in that. We'll overturn this Roe versus Wade thing. We'll stop the murdering in our country, amen? Those little children that are helpless, it'll be stopped. And let them riot and let everything be brought down if it needs to be. But let the murdering stop, amen? Let them riot. Let them say what they want to say. But the truth and God will stand. And he'll bless our nation for doing that. We need to be fathers over those unborn children. Amen. Amen. With such wickedness. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Amen. Remember, this is every day is Father's Day. Love your father with all your heart, soul, and strength. I hope today that I've done my part for you. Amen. It would break my heart. It would break my heart that my father would say, you didn't preach very good to them. It would break my heart. I want to do good for you. And I want you to do good for one another. Amen? Amen. And our father in heaven will take care of us. Amen? He says... I got my son, he's up here and he's preparing a place for each one of you. He's making a way for you. And he knows just what you like, too. <coughs> he's an awesome God. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. We're not perfect down here, but we have a good dad. And you are an awesome congregation. You say, well, I wish there was more. Well, well, just petition the Lord and see if you can't get some friends sitting beside you. Amen? God's in control how many are in a family. Whatever he decides.